In this video, I'll show you how I mix natural watercolor greens. If library books filled with color charts and weird names like hookers kind of freak you out, this is the video for you. Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Shada and today we are talking about mixing greens. Just a small disclaimer, I am not a very specific um, process driven artist. I like the play of art and I rarely use proper color names and we're certainly not going to make a color chart in this video. It's not that type of video. I'm not that type of gal. It's not that type of channel. <laughs> so I don't know what else to say except I'll try to use the correct color names as often as I can here to make it easy for you to follow along, but there's no substitute for experimenting and playing with the supplies on your own. So let's get into it. With my disclaimer done, my favorite green, my absolute favorite is a mix of olive green and deep fallow green. And that's what you see me mixing up first here. It gives a really natural, warm, dark green. Another trick I like to do is mix purple into my greens. So this is a mix of that deep fallow green, which is an incredibly rich, permanent green, and I'm mixing in purple. You can see if I mix too much in, it's like blue. <laughs> but the right mix of purple and green can really give you this dark, beautiful, cool, rich green that I find has a lot of uses, at least in my work. And you'll notice even if I add a little water to this, that it's still an incredibly cool, moody color, even when it's very light. Let's jump back to the first one that I mixed up, and that is the deep fallow green with a little bit of olive green. The olive green is very brown, and it just gives a very natural green. I love to mix these two, especially in the Munoz set. It's a great combination. Now, your set may not have those colors, and that's fine, and that's what we're really gonna talk about today. If you're looking at a set that has like a cadmium green or a sap green, basically like a bright emerald grass green, and you're like, how do I mix a really natural color? Let me tell you, the secret is red. So red sits across from green on the color wheel, which it's its exact, it's, <laughs> it is its exact opposite. And uh, that will help mute the color green. So add a little red to it, and it gives you this beautiful muted color. Let's bring this over to the page. This is red and cadmium green. And you can see it's muted and quite natural in the same way the olive green and deep fallow green mix is. Another trick I love to use is mix brown into your greens. So don't have a natural looking green in the palette, no problem. Take a sap green or a cadmium green, those bright grassy colors, and mix a little brown in. That's what I've done here. The sap green in the Munio set is very lime, and so I always tone it down with a little bit of brown, and I love the way that looks. We'll mix a bit of water in. You can see even when it's light, it's so natural and beautiful, and it's a perfect shade for leaves. Next up, I want to share one of my favorite mixes that you might think is a little weird, and basically all I can call this is mixing way too much red into your greens. <laughs> So my mix is basically equal parts cadmium red and green, any green, and it gives me this very muted gray green, it, maybe just gray, you mix a little more green in there, you're going to get this very grayed out brownish green color, and it's wonderful for shading on leaves and leaves that are in shadow, or any green item that's in shadow. Uh, let's do another purple mix. I am starting with this very vibrant minty um, green, and uh, I mixed in purple, and you'll see we get this wonderful mint blue green color so that can also be the benefit of purple up here I've got a mix of um, cadmium green and I want to put a little blue in it blue sits right beside green on the color wheel so it's easy to mix it in to make your green much cooler if you want to cool a green down add blue if you want to warm it up use a bit of yellow or brown um, so you can see I get a very minty green by adding blue as well and for this last one, I decided to mix sap green with navy. So I have an incredibly dark, rich navy blue, and I'm mixing the warm sap green in. And that also gives me this really natural blend. 
you know, what I want to show here is that you can just have a bit of fun and play with your mixes. This is incredibly not scientific. I haven't laid out a proper color chart. I don't like to do that. <laughs> and uh, But this is a good little sketchbook piece for me to remind myself of some of my favorite blends. So if I'm doing a piece and I'm wondering, how can I create a little more shadow? Oh yeah, I can add more red. Or if I need to cool a green down, a bit of blue. I need to darken it and cool it, a bit of purple. Maybe I need to warm it up, we could try brown or yellow. Um, so have a bit of fun and you don't have to just follow the green blends that I did. Come up with some of your own. If you're into warm colors, mix in more yellows and reds and browns and see what you come up with. I'll finish this video with a little bit of leaf practice painting. There's no sense in wasting all those beautiful greens that we just mixed up on the palette. So I am just going to play and paint some leaves and do a very loose sketchbook practice piece. Now, speaking of loose, incredibly unscientific mixing, let's also do some incredibly loose, messy leaves. Remember, a leaf can just be one or two strokes of the brush. Pick up a bit of paint, and then just let that brush hit the page, add a little extra pressure and see what shape emerges. Run the belly of the brush across the page and call that shape a leaf. It's a leaf if you call it a leaf. Just make a splotch and leave it alone. You can use the tip of your brush for really tiny, delicate leaves and use the whole belly for large, dramatic shapes. And that's it. I hope you found my loose explanation of some of my favorite greens helpful. If a real proper color chart would be good for you, make it. Don't let me stop you. Make the art that feels right for you. It's your creative journey. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you soon.